My girlfriend is as gentle as a chrysanthemum, yet she let her family set a betrothal gift of 880,000. When I raised doubts, she said lightly, wealth and honor are just as fleeting as a cloud. It's only 880,000. How have you become so vulgar? Before the wedding, she and her male best friend were up the mountain all night. I didn't eat or drink. Looking for her for a full day and night, only to find the two of them one tidy at the top of the mountain. Facing my hysteria, she slowly adjusted her clothes. My relationship with Makoto is the same as with a brother. It's just that dirty people see everything as dirty. On the way back, the male best friend pushed me down the cliff to silence me. My girlfriend just sighed. He's no longer the man I yearn for. It's better to say goodbye. The next time I opened my eyes, I was back to the day, and I proposed at her house with a sky-high dowry. 1. My daughter is the only university student in the village. She's destined to be a golden phoenix. You can afford a betrothal gift of 880,000, can't you? The sharp, sarcastic words of my girlfriend's mother, Sarah, exploded in my ears. I was momentarily stunned, and upon opening my eyes, I was met with Sarah's disdainful gaze, sedately sitting on the sofa. My girlfriend Willow finally spoke. George, wealth and honor are just as fleeting as a cloud. It's only 880,000. How have you become so vulgar? Looking at my limbs, still intact, I realized I had reincarnated back to the day I proposed at her house with a sky-high dowry. In my previous life, when I heard these words, my heart was cold from disappointment. Willow knew my father had been hospitalized recently, causing me financial stress, but during that time, not only didn't she contact me once, she also supported her mother's grief when we met. This money virtually emptied all of my family's savings. But thinking carefully, my heart ached for Willow. She was born into a family that favored bows over girls, which led to her quiet and modest disposition. I knew she was not expressing her true feelings, and whatever she wanted, I would fight for it. I've always protected her, and watched as she transformed from a self-conscious ugly duckling into a radiant swan. I treated her as my muse, placing her on a pedestal, untouched by the world's crime. I convinced myself that she was just influenced by her family's manipulations and had temporarily lost the ability to love. So even when faced with a high dowry, I didn't give up on marrying her. I borrowed from Peter to pay Paul, ran around, and finally put together 880,000, and at last proposed to the woman I loved. But she went wild with her male best friend on the mountain the day before the wedding. I was worried about her and went to the mountain to find her for a day and night, but I saw their illicit affair with my own eyes. Finally, in order to cover up the affair, the adulterer pushed me down the cliff, and I died a tragic death. This time, facing the same heartless mother and daughter, I just nodded with a smile. You're right, I shouldn't measure our love with money. Love always feels inadequate. I love Willow. 880,000 undersells her. I'm willing to offer double the dowry to marry Willow. The onlookers outside the door gasped in surprise. I sneered in my heart. Sarah deliberately opened the door to discuss this matter, and there were many people around, intending to morally kidnap me. This time, it should be my turn to stand on the moral high ground. I proffered that the money was all cashed out. To show sincerity, I could write a IOU. Anyway, the contract specifically states for marriage only. If we don't get married, it's just a piece of waste paper. Sarah picked up the IOU and looked it over and over again, her eyes shining with greed. But I still underestimated the shamelessness of this family. When Sarah saw me cooperating, her smile grew wider, as if she could see a pile of gold coins about to come to her. She ordered, and find a job for our David, and buy another house. Her husband, Manuel, also nodded in agreement. The villagers peeking at the door bit their silver teeth in jealousy, but kept their compliments. Your willow, so blessed to have such a generous and considerate son-in-law. I agreed to Sarah's unreasonable requests with a smile. I laughed in my heart. Don't worry, how could I forget to take care of this lazy brother-in-law? I won't let any of you get away. After I proposed to give a double betrothal gift, my so-called mother-in-law had a complete turnabout in attitude. Not only did she suggest that I stay for a few days, but she also walked around the village market with me every day. She boasted about the exorbitant betrothal gift of 1,760,000, and about David soon having a job and a house in the city. I cooperated thoroughly, continuing to make grand promises, and Sarah's grizzled face blossomed with smiles. I secretly noted a few faces full of jealousy, 
After all, an enemy's enemy is a friend, David, who was lazy and loved eating, also clung to me and directly asked me for money whenever he saw me. I took his phone, did some operations, and directly helped him lend a hundred thousand. David looked at the credited hundred thousand. His eyes almost popped out. He ran to the city to spend without a moment's delay. My girlfriend, who was as calm as a chrysanthemum, seemed a bit restless after seeing this. She hinted in various ways that her bag was out of style and was mocked by her friends for her bare neck. But when I offered to buy her one, she refused. She only accepted it pretending to be a loot. After I insisted, she pouted and said, Since you insist on giving it to me, I'll accept it. Now I understand that she doesn't want less, she wants more. She wants to F her cake can eat it too. This time I pretended not to understand her rejections and laughed and said, Okay, if Willow doesn't like it, I won't buy it. Willow's face immediately turned as ugly as if she had swallowed a fly. She ignored me all day but sneaked into my room at night. She took the bank card on my table. The camera next to it quietly recorded her sneaky appearance. I smiled sarcastically. They really are as nonchalant as a chrysanthemum. This whole family, boasting, eating, drinking, playing around, and buying bags. Each of them was up to their own thing, instead giving me peace and freedom. Until two days later, I got a call from my sister. Her voice was full of fear. Bro, I feel like someone has been following me lately. I sternly turned on the locator stealthily installed on David's phone. Sure enough, it showed that he was moving around the area where my sister rented her house. He really wouldn't mend his ways until he saw his own demise in my previous life. After I fell off the cliff and died a tragic death, my sister was heartbroken and could hardly eat or sleep. My soul floated in the air. I saw Willow falsely comforting my sister, but she turned around and put a sleeping pill in her water. I watched with bloodshot eyes as Willow pushed David into my sister's room and laughingly said, she will be your wife in the future. They took many photos and videos to threaten her. When she woke up and couldn't bear the humiliation, she walked into the cold lake on a rainy night, never to return again. My knuckles were white from the force, and my head was hammered by raging anger. Can't control your lower body, can you? Might as well cut it off then. I dialed my cross-dressing childhood friend's number. Bro, I need a favor from you. When my buddy appeared before me in my sister's identical female outfit and makeup, I could barely recognize him. I thought I had gained another sister. No wonder the elderly say having bows and girls is the same. My buddy lifted his orchid finger and threw a don't bore other people's death's coquettishness with his rough bubble sound. Brother, I slapped him on his head. I'd love to pose in you silent. We had he enough rough housing and got down to business. I deliberately bought a few bottles of good wine and put them on the table. As expected, David, who hadn't seen much of the world, guzzled down a bottle and even took the rest to go, concerned that others would snatch it from him. That evening, a drunk David followed my buddy lasciviously. Buddy pretended to be scared and ran into an unmonitored alley in panic. David gave a lascivious grin and followed in. On the balcony of an abandoned residential building across the street, I quietly watched this farce through a telescope. David ambushed my buddy in a corner in an instant, revealing a lewd smile. Hey, he, let brother take good care of you. My buddy trembled as he backed away until he could go no further. David's face was so rayed with excitement that he ignored that the sister in front of him was even sturdier than him. He pounced like a starving wolf, and then he touched something even bigger than his. My buddy smiled, showing his gleaming white teeth. Fancy a duel, darling. David's drunkenness was instantly scared sober. Holy crap, you're a man. He hurriedly let go of his hand and ran. He hadn't run to steps when he was picked up by the King Kong Barbie behind him. He was thrown to the ground, and she firmly stepped on his tools with her 45 size studded shoes. There were immediate pig-killing screams in the alleyway. My buddy slapped his face, lilted. I hate it brother is too weak, can't even bear a few kicks, don't want to play with you anymore. HMPH. After saying that, my buddy ran over David's body with a shy, knock kneed gate. Ah, uh, the screams were even louder. After David was taken to the hospital, the doctor suddenly told Sarah that David could never be a man again in his life. Sarah fainted from crying. My chrysanthemum indifferent girlfriend also shed a few tears. After David's accident, his girlfriend's house was surprisingly quiet. Sarah washed her face with tears all day long, 
Manuel silently smoked one cigarette after another. Sarah wanted to hide the fact that David was castrated from his family, but when she brought David home that night, I spotted Sarah's archenemy passing by and deliberately dropped the diagnosis book on the ground. Anne politely thanked Aunt Jow who picked up the diagnosis. As expected, the next day, the news about David spread throughout the village. Once David stepped out, a few hooligans at the village entrance were whistling while scanning his lower body. Yo. David. Heard you've been castrated. How are you going to pee from now on? Just squat like a girl. Ha ha ha. David's eyes were blood red as he swung his fists and fought them. He alone couldn't beat those hooligans and was eventually stripped of his pants while they were giggling. The hooligans tossed his pants in the air and finally hung them on a big tree at the village entrance. David was humiliated and ran home, but naked dot dot from then on. He never went out again and spent the whole day locking himself in the house to play games, taking all his anger out on Sarah and Willa. As for why he didn't vent on me, it's because he was still hoping that I, as a big fool, would give him money and help him buy a house. I deliberately played a few notifications of funds being credited to Alipay, and David was indeed drawn to it when he heard it. Brother-in-law, how did you manage to make so much money at this time? I tilted my phone and was evasive with him, then found an excuse to return to my room. And he, predictably, snuck into my room when I went to the bathroom. My phone wasn't locked, and it so happened to be on the online gambling interface. Looking at how David was treasuring my phone like a precious possession, I knew. The fish took the bait, perhaps unable to bear her short-tempered younger brother's scolding. Willow proposed to take a break with her male confidant by going mountaineering this time. She even made up the reason of worrying about her brother to go and pray. In my past life, although I was somewhat jealous, I was more worried about her safety. I deliberately took time off, wanting to accompany her. But she got angry, scolding me, that this is her and her confidence girl's night. She is an independent individual, not my accessory, and asked me not to be too controlling. I had to give up and kept reminding her to stay in touch with me. She impatiently waved her hand to agree, but as soon as she went up the mountain, she lost contact as I was anxiously searching for her. She was seeking thrills on the mountain with her male confidant. When I rushed up the mountain, I realized just what a huge cuckle I had become. But this time, I agreed without hesitation, seeing that I agreed so readily. Willow felt uneasy and questioned, aren't you afraid that it's unsafe for me to go up the mountain? Isn't your male confidant there? I have to respect your independence and won't interfere with your freedom. Willow choked and then started packing her things with a cold snort. I then opened my social app and updated a post. My girlfriend and her male confidant are going to go hill climbing to clear their minds tomorrow, hoping she will be in a better mood when she comes back. This account was registered on the day I came back to life. The few posts from before were Spent 1.76 million on bride price to marry the girl I love the most. Loving not only her but everything about her. Saving money to buy a house for my brother-in-law. As well as countless daily expenses for my girlfriend. Every time someone sarcastically commented about my girlfriend, I would argue with them. I don't believe it. My girlfriend is the best person in the world. The netizens were speechless, all lamenting that this lad is impervious to reason. They all affectionately called me FEI Yan Yang. As a result, I've gained several hundred thousand followers. The latest update suddenly received countless comments. The top comment with the most likes is, your girlfriend is going to have a boyfriend soon. I didn't disappoint the curious onlookers. I quickly updated the follow-up to this incident. After calculating the time accurately, I posted a substantial reward for a search online, claiming that my girlfriend and her male confidant had both gone missing. And I detailed my girlfriend's height and weight, the clothes she was wearing that day, her hairstyle, and the color of her backpack. I sought help from people with search and rescue experience, willing to give them a reward of 10,000 yuan. Worried that the civilian search and rescue efforts wouldn't be enough, Aside from calling the police, I also phoned the firefighters. That night, Ching Leng Mountain was brightly lit, with the help of everyone. We followed the search team, who was scouring the mountain with lanterns in a roundup manner and spent over five hours looking on the mountain. We found their fallen portable charger in a restricted area of the scenic spot. Half an hour later, we finally found Willow and her male confidant in a deep jungle. I was ecstatic, and my eyes shone as I ran over to Hub Willow. But as soon as I saw the scene before me, I paused, uttering, ah, 
I raised my voice, ensuring everyone present could hear. Willow, why aren't you wearing any clothes? A. Makoto, why are your clothes gone too? Startled, Willow hurriedly covered my mouth. She quietly explained. I took them off because it was too hot. I could feel several sympathetic glances from around me. Still acting oblivious, I continued to question. Willow, why are there so many red marks on your body? Were you bitten by insects? Someone's phone rang in the crowd. The ringtone just happened to be that song cheating. The lyrics, where is the green hat echoed at the right moment, everyone's gaze neatly fell on me. The silence in the air was frightening. The person seemed to want to hang up the phone, but in the panic accidentally turned up the volume. The song rang out even louder. Deafening. Makoto and Willow were both sweating profusely, annoyed. Willow glared at the crowd. I behaved properly and uprightly. If you have to think of it this way, then I can't argue anything. I get along with Makoto like a brother. Sure enough dirty-minded people see everything as dirty. After saying that, she ran down the hill in anger, but suddenly seemed to remember something and turned back to command me. George, take off your clothes and give them to me. I was only wearing a thin short-sleeved shirt that was torn and tatter, with scratches from being cut by tree branches while searching for her on the mountain. Just as I was about to take it off for her, a lady beside us couldn't stand it anymore and scolded while pointing at Willow's nose. The young man was so desperate to find you, but look at you, having an affair with another man in the woods. You. 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 Willow was too infuriated to speak. I am clear and innocent with Makoto. The lady interrupted her with a weird look on her face. Still Makoto, love master. I guess. My vision is 2.0. I saw your red strap hanging on this wild man's belt from afar. Willow couldn't argue with her and burst into tears. Running down the hill in a panic, waiting for her were numerous onlookers who had rushed over after hearing the news. The ones at the front were a few gossiping ladies from the village who disliked Sarah the most. They were known as the fur loudspeakers of the village, and if there was anything they knew, it would be a dereliction of duty if any dog in the village didn't know about it. The moment these nearly 60-year-old women saw Makoto, who seemed weak on his feet, and Willow, who was disheveled, their eyes burst with amazing light. Even the row of light bulbs down the hill was dim in comparison to the brightness in their eyes. 8. Willow didn't speak to me all the way home and locked herself in her room as soon as we got back. I was just happy to be free and quickly assured the fans who hadn't made it to the scene that everything was all right. My girlfriend was found by the police and rescue team earlier tonight and is now safely home. She and her male confidant got lost on their way down the mountain and accidentally got into a restricted area. Fortunately, when found, both were in good health, with only minor scratches on their bodies. Thank you to the police, rescue teams and everyone else involved for their support and concern. My comment section blew up, and you, my friend, are the evergreen in the forest of love brain, the highest number in a deck of cards, McDonald's mascot, Batman's biggest customer and the backbone of Joker. Brother, you must be hungry. Guess what I picked up? With a picture of a green hat. I didn't respond to these comments, but instead began to talk to myself in the comments section. Do you think roses or orchids would be better for our wedding bouquets? I think roses would be nice. They represent our unswerving love. At the same time, the news about the joint search and the on-scene bust had made the hot search that night. Many netizens dug up my girlfriend's personal information and sent their kind regards to her family. The four big gossips in the village were very effective, not only spreading the news throughout the village, but also creating several different versions. The rumors in the village also made Sarah feel disgraced. The family once again barred their door. They dared not to go out, but I did. After I died in my previous life, Willow and Makoto used my death to gain popularity and became internet celebrities, disguising themselves as my deeply in love girlfriend and good brother. Even after the traffic decreased, the couple fabricated a series of evidence to reverse the situation, proving me to be the bad guy. This made numerous netizens sympathize with them and made them popular again. Netizens all blamed me for my demise and began to harass my parents. Coupled with the death of my younger sister, the old folks couldn't bear the series of blows and committed suicide by taking sleeping pills. Looking at the increasingly haggard Willow and her family, I still felt that it was not enough. It is nowhere near the end. Soon, you will miss these days of calm. Sarah, seeing that I was not affected by the rumors and still showing a kind love for Willow, 
finally relaxed dot dot however she did not know that willow and makoto were taken away for investigation as soon as they descended the mountain because they entered a national protected area the police carefully checked their phones chat records and album and asked them to truthfully recount the entire process all i needed to do was wait at home I didn't even have to do anything to get a complete chain of evidence, but it's too boring to reveal the evidence now, I'm not done with my fun yet. Seeing that Sarah didn't want to go out, I even took the initiative to help her with grocery shopping. The moment I stepped out the house, I became the center of attention for the entire village. Countless gossiping eyes fell on me, and not a few nosy people openly or covertly tried to get information from me. I smiled happily and told them that I trust Willow's character. She was merely mountain climbing with her male confidant, so everyone shouldn't speculate maliciously. My words of clarification, which in reality only served to worsen the situation, convinced everyone of the authenticity of the scandal. Wherever I go, people give me either gloating or sympathetic looks. Even several old ladies recommended their daughters to me. A secret, lad, listen to this old lady's advice. Willow is not a good girl. Why don't you consider my daughter? She's hardworking and capable, far better than Willow. I politely declined with a determined look in my eyes. Old lady, don't persuade me, even if everyone says so. I still believe in Willow. She would never betray me. We still hope to have you at our wedding. The old lady was speechless and in the end, all she could give was a sigh. When I returned to my girlfriend's house after a stroll outside, I happened to bump into Sarah as she hurried into Willow's room. I kept a normal expression and cheerfully greeted Sarah before returning to my room and quietly turned on my phone. The recording device in Willow's room finally came in handy. Her anxious voice came through the phone. Mom, what should I do? I'm pregnant. And it's Makoto's, nine. Even though I was mentally prepared, at the moment I heard it, my heart still ached. Sarah slapped her, her tone suggesting a sense of disappointment. You foolish girl, where can we find another fool like George? Are you trying to ruin us? If the bride price and your brother's house slip away from us, I'll kill you, mom. Willow covered her face with her hand in pain. Soon, Sarah had made up her mind. After all, the pregnancy is at an early stage. We'll just pass it off as his and take the opportunity to propose moving up the wedding to avoid any potential problems. I'm really going to be driven to my death by you, you money-losing thing. Luckily, that lad's a fool, otherwise. I'd sell you to an old bachelor in the mountains to swap for your brother's house. I started laughing as I listened. It's really ridiculous. This is the woman I protected all my life in my previous life. The voices discussing over the phone gradually faded. And not long after, Sarah dragged Willow over to knock on my door. When I heard that Willow was pregnant, I aptly feigned an ecstatic look. This is wonderful. Willow, I'm going to be a dad. Sarah took the opportunity to propose moving up the wedding claiming that it would not look good wearing a wedding dress in the later stages, pregnancy. I agreed without hesitation. It's about time to end this play. After all, it's getting nauseating to keep acting. Satisfied with the answer they wanted, mother and daughter left with satisfaction. I then opened a WeChat conversation with Makoto's wife. The invitation has been sent. It was a pleasure working with you, Anna. Anna sent me a handshake emoji. Anna is a gold digger of the Anna group, it wasn't easy for Makoto to marry her and he carefully spends every day as a stay-at-home husband. On the surface, Makoto is gentle and heeds only to Anna. In actuality, he secretly shifts assets from Yana Group, besides having an affair with Willow. He also keeps several mistresses. The evidence collected by my private detective is overwhelming. I send it all to Anna to show my sincerity is seeking cooperation. Anna has helped me a lot in my revenge. With Anna's support, I believe that the drama at the wedding will be particularly exciting. A few days before the wedding, Sarah broke the norm and brought her precious son along. She brought him over to me with a flattering smile. Greet flicker in her eyes as she rubbed her hands together like a fly. Son-in-law, you previously promised to buy a house for David. I have consulted a master who said that today is a lucky day. I looked at David who was sitting on the sofa with bloodshot eyes due to gambling. With a slight smile, I reply, okay. Upon hearing my answer, Sarah once again got excited. She bought a long string of firecrackers and set them off from 12 midnight until 3 in the morning. She made sure everyone knew that this fool agreed to buy a house for her beloved son. It wasn't until the neighbors accused her of disturbance that she stopped. The next day, 
The whole family happily accompanied me to the property sales office. I picked a spacious flat worth over a million with a wave of my hand. Sarah couldn't hide her excitement as she touched and examined every corner of the flat, eventually taking a bunch of pictures with her phone. Willow was also a bit envious. She pouted and pulled the corner of my clothes and casually said, I've never lived in such a good house. Maybe I'm just not that fortunate. I understood her hint and gave a meaningful glance to her belly. Don't worry, how could I possibly forget about you? Willow thought I understood her hint and a smug smile appeared at the corner of her mouth. When handling the procedures, I applied for a zero down payment policy using David's ID. The lower the down payment, the higher the monthly installments. But hey, what's a little more debt? This family didn't understand the scheme, kept calling me a good brother-in-law and good son-in-law, grinning from ear to ear. When I claimed not to have the money for the handling fee after paying the down payment, Sarah bit the bullet and made up for the several tens of thousands of yuan of handling fees just to avoid any mishap. She thought she got a great deal, but she didn't realize that it was all in vain. Originally, I wanted Anna to bring Makoto to the wedding on the wedding day. Unexpectedly, Willow shamelessly requested Makoto to be the best man. I was shocked by the shamelessness of these two people, and my expression was momentarily uncontrollable. Through the chat record of the two synchronized to tablets, I learned that Willow wanted the father of her child to give her away at the wedding. Both Anna and I were utterly disgusted. Were we all part of their game? When we came for the wedding procession, the bridesmaids that Willow had invited blocked the door. My brothers and I wisely handed over the red envelopes. The lead bridesmaid weighed the red envelope in her hand and tutted with disdain written all over her face. I thought you loved Willow a lot. You're really stingy. Only a 500 red packet per person. I put on a smiling face and with sincerity filling my eyes. Then how much do you think I should give? The bridesmaid wagged a finger. One of my brothers behind me took over the conversation. A thousand, she sneered. Ten thousand per person. You said you love Willow, right? Then prove it to us. I was patient throughout the entire process, respectfully supplementing the money. Only then did the bridesmaid smile contentedly. Looking at their greedy faces, I couldn't help but sigh. What birds of a feather. I raised my lips. Little did they know that the person taking photos behind me wasn't recording the video, but live streaming on the internet. When Willow walked towards me in her magnificent wedding dress, I was momentarily dazed. She was as beautiful as I had imagined countless times. I worshipped her as a goddess. But she was a cold-blooded snake, devouring and drinking the blood of our family. I lowered my eyes, hiding the hatred in them. When I looked up again, my eyes were filled with profound affection. The host said a few auspicious words, and we quickly moved on to the next segment. Plain sweet memories of the groom and bride's initial meeting, knowing each other, and falling in love. Along with the touching BGM, many emotional relatives and friends turned away to wipe away their terror secretly. Willow was also somewhat moved with tears twinkling in her eyes. I glanced at Makoto in his best man's outfit beside me and felt the irony. Halfway through the progress bar, the atmosphere abruptly changed. Willow and Makoto's ambiguous voices echoed in every corner of the wedding, followed by the explicit chat logs of their four-year relationship. Ironically, Willow and I had only been together for five years. It ended with a recording of Willow and Sarah making me the fall guy and the detailed plan of Willow intentionally revealing my sister's rental address for David to Harris, my sister. The overflow of information plunged the scene into deathly silence. Ah! Willow screamed aloud, lunging forward to turn off the screen. But how could she stop so many recordings and live streams at the scene? It's nothing but a desperate struggle. The viewers in the live room began to furiously swipe the screen. Willow's and Makoto's names rushed to the trending, hashtag Willow Makoto cheating, hashtag vampire family. The comment section was quickly overwhelmed by netizens. People who betray true love should swallow 10,000 needles. My goodness, are these deeds done by humans? Feel sorry for the brother, a real fool. I lived in the same village as her younger brother who was sent to a juvenile detention center as a minor and became even worse as he grew up. The girls in the village would stay far away from him. Oh god, I can't bear to imagine. If it wasn't for his accidental gelding, he might have ruined a girl's life. Ah, how did he become gelded? Does anyone know the details? There was an uproar among the guests. I smiled bitterly, shaking all over with anger, pointing at Willow. My voice choked. Willow, I trusted you so much loved you so much. How could you do this to me? 
Ah, say something. Where have I wronged you? You strategized against our whole family. Three golden gifts for the betrothal gifts. Not a single one I gave less than you. I helped find a house and a job for your brother without a word. You and your best male friend went hiking. You said you two were innocent, and I believed it. What did I get in return? Say something. Ah, finally, I asked, as if draining all of my strength, shedding blood like tears. Willow, do you have a heart? Willow suddenly slumped to the ground, crying like a misty rain, disgracefully tugging at the hem of my pants. It's not like that. Someone is trying to harm me. It's all Piet. George, do you believe me? I kicked her away with one foot, closing my eyes and not wanting to have another look at her. My heart had long been shattered when I fell off the cliff in my past life. Seeing the situation go south, Makoto tried to sneak off stage. Anna, who was watching the fun from the audience, wasn't going to let him go. She stormed the stage with a few hefty security guards. With a swift and sharp movement, she slapped Makoto ten times causing his face to swell like a pig's head, seeing the raging anger in Ana's eyes. Makoto was so frightened and that he started shaking. In haste, he pointed at Willow. Darling, it's her. She seduced me. Willow looked at him in disbelief. Makoto, you clearly, you're talking nonsense. Makoto interrupted her, grabbed Willow's hair and started raining blows on her. It's all your fault. If it wasn't for your seduction, how could I betray my beloved wife? A man's strength is much greater than a woman's. He had pulled off a patch of Willow's scalp, and blood was visible on her face. She looked utterly disheveled. After attacking Willow, Makoto quickly put on a smiling face and knelt down in front of Anna. Darling, I made a mistake just this once. Please forgive me. I'll behave in the future. Anna laughed. Under Makoto's hopeful gaze, she threw the evidence of him secretly transferring the company's assets onto his face. She waved at the security guards behind her. Her tone was as cold as ice. Beat him. Beat him hard. Sarah and Manuel were startled by this scene and wanted to hide with David. But they ran straight into a few muscular men with tattoos. Yo. What's the big deal? David's face went pale. And he turned to flee. The leading big brother kicked him to the ground. Little rabbit, pay back quickly. Or I'll skin you. Seeing her son being attacked, Sarah was heartbroken. She said trembling. Don't hit my son. How much does he owe? I'll pay it back. 1,076,000. Sarah was so frightened that she sat down on the ground. After looking around, she crawled towards me. Son-in-law, you can't ignore David. Willow just made a little mistake. You love her so much. You will surely forgive her. I'll take care of the bastard, and she can give birth to a chubby bow for your family. I sneer and said word by word. You're really shameless. I shrugged her off and left the messy wedding hall. Since the police had a complete chain of evidence, in addition to my own transfer records and the video of Willow secretly swiping my bank card, I smoothly recovered all the money had spent. Afterwards, I didn't pay attention to the fate of this family, but the old friends who were still inside eating melons and Aunt Zhao, who lived next door to Sarah, wouldn't let me miss the heartwarming follow-up. The girlfriend's family couldn't repay the huge debt and they were pelted with paint by debt collectors every day, so they were scared to leave the house. David couldn't afford the high mortgage and became a person of dishonest. He completely fell apart and later took all the money home and fled to another province. Sarah's couple had to sell their house for their son's mess and work three jobs every day to pay off their debt. Willow's reputation was completely ruined. She was fired from the company and other companies also expressed their unwillingness to accept such a morally depraved person. Under the pointing fingers of the villagers and the overwhelming internet exposure, she became mentally unstable. It was said that she was almost insane. She would often mutter, it wasn't like this in my past life. One day, while Sarah's couple was washing dishes at a restaurant, they received a phone call from the police station. They were asked to identify a corpse. It turned out to be David, whom they hadn't seen for a long time. The money David took was soon spent. God knows what he was thinking. He actually robbed a bank and took hostages. After multiple warnings and no response, he was shot on the spot. Sarah's couple is now impoverished. Unable to even afford a coffin, they simply sold the mad willow at a low price to the old bachelor in the neighboring village for coffin money. As for the traitorous Makoto, I heard about it in passing from Aina. He not only lost everything, but was also sentenced to three years for embezzling public funds. After being released from prison, he couldn't find a job. Not learning from his past misconduct, 
He thought of living on his looks again and became a gigolo in a nightclub. Three years passed in the blink of an eye, and my sister-in-law successfully graduated from her master's program. On the day of her graduation ceremony, I received a strange phone call. Even Rory hadn't spoken yet. My sixth sense told me it was Willow. A horse sob came from the earpiece. George, I was wrong. Please save me. Please. My parents sold me to the old bachelor in the neighboring village. Auntie beats me at the slightest disagreement. I'm living a life worse than death. Please, for the sake of old times, save me once. I reply blandly. I am no longer the young man I used to care so much about. It's good to part ways now. The girlfriend was taken aback. You're reborn. Before I could reply, there were hurried footsteps and yelling on the other end. Bitch, you dare to run. I'll kill you. I hung up the phone. At the ceremony, my sister was wearing a master's gown, smiling like a flower. The sunlight spilled on her shoulders. It was beautiful. 